All right, guys, you've seen the thumbnail. It's finally here. The Mavic 3 Enterprise. Nick has had his hands on one for a week. So let's go inside and have a chat about it. Today, how are you? Good. What do we got? Here it is. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, here she is, the Mavic 3 Enterprise. You don't have to blur it, it's, it's been officially announced. There we go. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All right, so first thing I've noticed, it looks exactly like the Mavic 3, except the front, they've replaced the cover. Yep. Something uh, a little bit, looks like it's gonna be a lot easier to get on and off. Doesn't look that much different to the Mavic 3, does it? At first glance, but I guess we'll we'll unpack it. Um, straight away, I've noticed there's a couple of new things. So there's a beacon on top. Yep, got a beacon strobe light on top. And what's this? That's the PSDK port. Right, so it tells me that we've got a little thing called an RTK unit, which I guess goes on top, yep. which we'll talk about in a minute. I'm very excited because it looks like we've got a really small form factor, I guess, in, in, a, in a mapping and a serving drone. drone. Yeah. Now there's actually, there's two of these, isn't there? There's two models. Yeah, there's the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 Thermal. Right, so it's the same thing, but with a thermal, thermal, thermal capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, before we get into this drone, let's just, we'll talk about what's in the box. Looks like we've got a, a controller here. Now, is this a new controller? It's the RC Pro Enterprise. Right. So it visually looks the same as the RC Pro. So same as, as um, what you can get with that. Yep. Okay. Uh, however, the internal CPU is a four times better performance and a seven times better performance on the GPU. Internally. Right. So they just upgraded the So brands. if you are mapping large areas, you're not gonna get your yep. controller crashing. Yep, all right, that's good. Batteries, they look the same. I assume these will be the same batteries? Yep, same batteries yep. as the uh, Mavic 3. All so right, if you do cool. have the Mavic 3, you don't have to purchase different batteries. Just also what I've noticed is there's a lot of spaces here for batteries. So it looks like you can take seven in this yeah, box. six there and one in the drone, so seven. That's awesome. All right, so we've got little accessories here. What's this thing here? What goes in here? Well, that'll be probably for the speaker. For the Mavic 3 thermal comes with a speaker attachment. All right, cool. So we're talking about search and rescue, yeah. those kind of first responders. First responders. Yep. Search and rescue. All right, cool. Underneath here. Yeah. Just extra storage space for Just your storage, cables. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we've got this multi-charging hub here. Does it charge three batteries at the same time? No, it's still just the one battery. Still the one, so one at a time. One at a time. I've noticed also USB-C, which is great. Yeah, that uh, plugs into your 100 watt Ooh. charger. 100 watts is awesome. So I could essentially just use my laptop charger or my Mac charger, yep. go straight in here if I forget that or whatever. Exactly, it's yeah. just Or you can charge a mobile phone or other devices yeah. while you're charging your batteries. So there's two USB-C ports on the end of this. So I guess you go right one into the controller and one into the actual um, charging of the batteries. batteries yep. Can you charge this on the go as well? So can you plug a cable? You uh, can, you USB can have the battery in the back, plug it in and then yep. put USB-C into oh, the back great. to awesome. charge. All right. Now, I think everyone wants to know the new features or the key features of this particular drone. So tell us uh, in detail and let's let's go into because you've had a flight, haven't you? I have, yeah. I have tested it out. Did you model or map or what did I you I mapped do? and modeled. Okay, awesome. Let's let's talk about this. So the RTK first. I'll chuck that on. I guess just explain why this is so important and why everyone's kind of very excited about this. So the RTK, just like any other RTK drone, the Phantom 4 RTK, it's designed for surveying, mapping, modeling, where it's gonna give you a lot more accuracy, especially your positioning and your altitude. Yep. Uh, also when the drone's in the air, it's staying in a position a lot more accurately. So if it's a high wind, it won't uh, lose the altitude. Yep. I won't deviate from its flight plan. It's just super, super so accurate. Super accurate, yeah. Yep. And that's what you need for modeling and mapping, Definitely. right? All right, so this RTK, does that mean we can connect this to the DRTK2 base station? Definitely can. Awesome. And it is super quick, super easy. You just go into your settings, turn on RTK, it'll find the RTK base station straight away and yeah, it links. That's no cool. need to pair, it's both on mode five. So talking about RTK, if you don't have the base station, 
can you still use the drone without the RTK module and just do some, you know, your normal mapping and modeling and still get an accurate? Absolutely, yeah, you can use it without the RTK. It really depends on the quality that your client is asking for and what sort of level of detail they need. But yeah, you can map without the RTK. Also, you can actually connect to, to servers as well with that, so you don't need the, the base station. Yeah, right. But if you are somewhere where there's no signal, no phone reception, then you'll you'd, need, you'd need one of them. Yeah, okay. Camera. Everyone's asking about the camera. <laughs> what have we got? <laughs> so we've got a two cameras, tele and a wide. So mm -hmm. the wide is a 20 megapixel, yep. four thirds inch sensor, mechanical shutter. Mechanical shutter. Oh, I get a slow clap. <laughs> this is what everybody has been wanting in a small form, in a small drone. Been waiting for a mechanical shutter drone for a really long time. The next best thing, I guess, or the industry standard is the Phantom 4 RTK which has a mechanical shutter. But why is that so important? Why do we need a mechanical shutter for mapping and modeling? Well, anyone out there mapping and modeling, you know that when you're using a mechanical shutter, you're not gonna get blurred images. You can fly a lot quicker and capture those images instead of having to hold the drone in the position to capture. Mm. So it's much more efficient. You're capturing photos while the drone's flying and yep. much sharper images. Some of the mapping jobs we've done with some older drones that don't have a mechanical shutter and there's maybe really low light or a, a overcast day, we'll have to hover up. Pause, pause, take, take a photo, photo. Yeah. keep going, pause, take a photo, and then keep going. But this would be literally snap, 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 snap as it's going up. Yep. And the interval times? 0 0.7 seconds. Oh. <laughs> another, another slow, slow clap. clap, another slow clap. That was great. So with the interval time, it's really important for, I guess, efficiency. Being able to shoot really quickly in these intervals is so beneficial. To give you an example, right, so with the Phantom 4 RTK, what, what's that interval time? 2.5 seconds, yep. it's two seconds. Okay. And at that that interval, what's the fastest you can fly to map? If you're yeah, mapping, you're looking at five meters per second, 5.3 okay. meters per second. And then this? 15 meters per second. Yo, okay. So just give them like a perspective of, um, I guess what, what you mapped y the other day, what, what was the size of that? Size of that was 12,900 meters square, so looking at 3.2 acres. Okay. How uh, fast did that do it? Six and a half minutes. And if you had a Phantom that's 4? Used, that's, Phantom 4 is 12 and a half minutes, so you're yeah. halving your time. Yeah. So that, that is a massive thing. Basically, this flying at 15 meters per second with an 80% forward overlap, yeah. you're achieving that quick. Yeah. Time, whereas the Phantom 4 has to fly a lot slower. M300? What? M300 is, I think, 7, but again, you wouldn't risk flying at that yeah, speed because no you're going to get a lot of blur. Yeah. And there's no mechanical no shutter mechanical on that. Shutter. Yeah. So that is the biggest, the biggest draw card to this, I'm, I'm thinking. So I guess application-wise, roof inspections, um, power lines, telco, you could... Yeah, all that. It's just super easy to get in, zoom in, get your shot that you need. Yep. Anyone um, doing quarry surveys or mining surveys, you're going to half your time or you can cover a larger area yeah. within the one battery instead of having to swap batteries. The That's speed incredible. is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Did you notice that when you were mapping as well, just how? Yeah, it was crazy fast. <laughs> yeah. well, the, if I was going to do that job again, I probably wouldn't need to fly that quickly because we had plenty of time. Yeah. But having that ability, I had a look at the model that I created from it. The auto mosaic image was really, really good. And that was at 90 meters. All right, so, so we've, um, we've just touched on applications like mapping, quarry surveys and et cetera. What about modeling or creating digital twins? So how do you think this would go with modeling something? Yeah, I think this is ideal for modeling, especially a facade, because you can manually fly it. You can set your interval to 0 0.7 seconds and you can get up to a meter from an obstacle as well. So you can drop that down to a meter, you can get really close and get detailed images. Really, yeah. yeah. And then obviously with the RTK as well in modeling, you're gonna get that extra, extra accuracy. accuracy. So you touched on the the, uh, the zoom. Yeah, so the zoom, there is a tally um, camera. Yep. So you've got your, obviously wide, which is 20 megapixel, and yep. the tally is the 12 megapixel. So using the Pilot 2 app, you have zoom on that. You can go from your wide to your zoom camera like you would with the H20T, and you can use the dial on the controller to zoom in all yep. the way to about 56 is a digital zoom, yeah. uh, whereas Mavic 3, it's explore mode, you have to go into that setting to get yeah, that zoom capture. So tell us a bit more about Pilot 2. Is it different or is it the same as M30? Same M3? as the M30, uh, yeah. which is great because you've got all the same features. You've got your pin drops uh, where you can drop a pin on the map and the drone will turn face that direction. Mm -hmm. So even line of sight, you can do small links with this. Yep, timestamps as well, security features. Yeah, security features yep. are the same as the M30 M300. Yep. Also timestamp, you can customize it, you can add in your own text. 
And then battery time, I'm not sure if we spoke about battery time, so. 45 minutes flight time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's paper, that's on paper, so what, so what do you reckon real we'll world, actually um, get? Yeah, we'll have to test that and see what's that. 25, 28 minutes Yeah, ish. I'd say probably about half an hour, yeah, it would be good in, in no wind. So that's, so that's really good. So we've got a faster capture time, we've got a better high performing camera, longer flight time, so all these boxes are getting ticked. For me, it's just such an efficient mapping and modeling drone. Yeah, definitely it's designed really for, for mapping and modeling, but also for anyone going from a Mavic 3, wanting to get into the enterprise market and not spending a lot of money on an M300 and a P1, yeah, this is going to be ideal. We swapped it. <laughs> it made me do it. <laughs> Just in comparison, because we've got the two Mavics next to each other, this is obviously built and designed for modelling and mapping, but there's also some creative capabilities, some basic photography and video if you just want to get some basic shots of a site, right? So in comparison, what are we talking about? Uh, look, you still got 4K 30, so that's it. You don't have 25 or 100 frames like you would with the Mavic 3. Yep. But again, it is, yeah, that uh, 20 megapixel yep. camera. So it's good. It's good, yeah. yeah you can you're still not gonna get, get your photos. photos. You're not going to get no. ProRes or any of that higher end stuff for Cine, but it's, it's just enough, yeah. You've got panoramic. Oh, yeah. Oh, 360 spheres as well. Actually, there is, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can take 360 panorama images, which is also used for virtual tours. You can do that indoor, in, inside, outside, anywhere. So it's, it's a really handy feature that they've added to it. Also, you've got JPEG and RAW on this, whereas the Phantom 4 doesn't have RAW, it's just JPEG. So you're getting a better images as well. What about water resistance? Can I fly this in the rain like the M30? No, it's not IP rated. So um, uh, okay. if you are doing any inspections or- <laughs> Keep it dry. Yeah, search and rescue, I guess, yeah, keep it dry. Okay, so prices for the Mavic 3 Enterprise and Thermal. As of launch day, for the Enterprise, you're looking at the $6,000 price point, that's Australian dollars, and the Thermal comes in just over $8,000. Don't forget, if you're serious about getting into drone surveys for quarries, mine sites, stockpile measuring and modeling, and you wanna use high precision workflows, you will need the RTK module, which is sold separately at $1,000. And if it's in your budget, we also recommend the DRTK2 base station and battery kit, which includes the 100 watt charging hub and three extra batteries. If you're in Australia and looking to buy, check out the D1 store or speak to their enterprise team for more info. I'll drop some links in the description. All right, so the big question on everyone's minds would be, I've got a Phantom 4 RTK. Do I need to upgrade to this one? Should I upgrade? And what are the real differences? If you've got a Phantom 4 RTK, you're doing surveying, and I definitely recommend upgrading because it's just more efficient. You're covering a much larger area. You're getting a lot more done in a day's work compared to the Phantom 4 RTK. So it's the biggest thing, efficiency. And it would potentially be a Phantom 4 killer? This is replacing the Phantom 4 <laughs> yeah. RTK, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, okay. More flight time, more stable than the Phantom 4 as well. The RTK Faster. just yeah, gives you that. You can see why they've done it, because this, when this came out, it was a beautiful machine, flies very fast. It's great for cine photography. And I think to be able to get the Phantom 4 RTK tech into something in this kind of form, I mean, look how small that yeah, is. Definitely. So this is actually a really good entry level professional drone in the enterprise space. Entry level, but also any professional out there that is using the M300 or the M30, they're gonna to wanna to get one of these mm. as well and have them as yeah. part of their kit. All right, so in summary, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about the form factor of this thing, how they've just got all the technologies that's out there already from the Phantom 4 RTK, made it smaller, made it quicker, more efficient. We're talking about the RTK system straight into the base station, the mechanical shutter, the zoom, the longer battery flying time, the faster flying time, and the intervals, so 0.7 seconds per shot, that's, that's massive. So you're gonna be spending less time on site, you're gonna be covering more of an area, um, in and out very quickly in a foldable drone, chuck it in the back of your ute, and then off you go to the next site. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. That's it, thanks for watching another video. This is our first impressions. Obviously we're gonna go out there and test this properly. We're gonna model some uh, really cool structures for you. So hang out and subscribe to see those videos. Other than that, Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you in the next one.